Oh my gosh, it's so plushy! <laughs> make a pillow, but I wanted to make a pillow for an adult. Something that was calming, neutral, but also super plushy and cuddly, something you would actually want to use. <laughs> and that is what I made. I made a pillow that has a very simple pattern to work up on the main body. So super easy peasy in that regard, but I wanted to add a little extra something something with these appliques, a really pretty design on the front to make it something extra special. So I'm excited to show you how to work this applique and how to make slip stitches on top of crochet work. On top of that, we're adding a zipper. <laughs> so, you know, just a little extra something that makes it that much more special and ups the level of it, making it, making it look a little more professional. But just because it looks professional doesn't mean it has to be hard. I'm gonna label this pattern as an easy level pattern that is a step above advanced beginner because we are doing the crochet on top of crochet. So I really need you to know placement and I really need you to know how to work on work, if that makes any sense. So just really, really know your stitches. The terminology for this project is in U.S. terminology, so when I am referring to the names of stitches, I'm using U.S. terms. The dimensions of this pillow cover is 15 inches wide by 15 inches tall. The pattern you can find in both the description section and comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link and it'll take you straight to my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, where you can find the pattern and purchase it, print it off, be ready to crochet with me. In the material section, you will see that this is also July's kit box, so you'll learn all that you need to know from the material section on how to acquire that. But yeah, I can't wait to show you how to make this. This is super special, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and dive right into what materials I used to make this blossom pillow cover. The materials that we are going to use for the pillow cover will include loops and threads, cozy wool yarn, in the color fleece. Now this yarn is 50% wool, 50% acrylic. So if you have a wool allergy, you can substitute this out. I just highly recommend that you substitute it out for a size six, super bulky, super chunky yarn. That way your project is as close in dimension as my project is. So try to keep the size yarn the same, very important. We are using approximately 288 yards of yarn or 264 meters of yarn, 15.5 ounces of yarn, or 400 grams of yarn for this project. So just over three skeins of yarn. The crochet hook we are using is the N15 or 10 millimeter crochet hook. I wanted to use the big crochet hook to go with the super bulky, super chunky yarn. We want our stitches to be plushy, squishy, comfy, drapey. We do not want them to be tight, stiff. If you go smaller in your crochet hook, the stitches will be tighter and you're gonna lose a lot of that plushy, squishy, comfy, feeling of the pillow cover, okay? So just be aware of that. Also, because we are working with the super bulky, super chunky yarn, having a larger yarn needle or tapestry needle to use is going to be important so that way the yarn will actually feed through the eye of the yarn needle. Just saying, we're gonna use this to join sides together, to attach pieces onto the pillow cover, and even to weave in our ends. So we are gonna use that a lot. A pair of scissors, obviously. The pillow insert, is a 16 by 16 inch pillow insert from Loops and Threads. Now the pillow itself is 15 inches wide, 15 inches long. The pillow insert is 16 by 16, it's a little bit larger. I did that on purpose, so that way the pillow form would fill out. The pillow inside will fill out the cover, so that way you have this really beautiful stretched out form to the pillow cover. Okay, so these parts right here are optional. You can choose to just completely seal your pillow cover and then it's not removable from the inside insert, but I like to launder the cover if it got dirty. So I am using a zipper that is white, 100% polyester, 14 inches, 36 centimeters, nothing crazy. I chose white because it matched closest to the color of the yarn that I was working with. You're also going to need sewing thread. This is just white, nothing special about it. And then a sewing needle to obviously go with the thread. All right, 
That's everything you're going to need for this pillow cover. I'm gonna put links to everything you see here in the description section and comment section below this video. So if you need help getting your hands on anything, just click on that link, purchase the item, have it shipped directly to you. This is also July's kit box. I noticed that there was a lot of pieces and I wanted to hook you up and help you out. So if you just wanted to get the kit so you don't have to worry about anything, then feel free to do so. In the kit, it'll include all of the yarn you will need for the project. It will include the crochet hook, the large yarn needle, it'll include the zipper, and it will include this little card that I made with sewing thread and the sewing needle. And it will also include a printed out copy of the pattern. Now this kit does not include the big pillow insert, okay? It was just too costly and I figured that you could probably use something at home or figure out what you really wanted to use as an insert on your own, okay? So that is everything that comes in the kit. You can find the kit on my website, crochetwithtiffany.com under kits. And this is a limited supply, so you might wanna get your hands on that right away, so that way you don't miss out. All right, when you have everything you need to make your bloom pillow cover, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's begin starting with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends or at least do something with that tail. I'm gonna say that's about a five, six inch long tail. Then I'm going to create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook. We're ready to go. Okay, we're gonna start by chaining 31 chains. And make them looser chains. We don't wanna make anything super tight. Again, we're going for plushy, squishy, not stiff and rigid. 30, 31. Great. For row one, we are going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So finding our V-stitches, one, two, single crochet. And then we are just making one single crochet stitch in every chain all the way across. So we should end row one with a total of 30 single crochet stitches. All right, in the last stitch here, making a single crochet, ending row one. Awesome, moving on to row two, chain one turn our work. Okay, for row two, we're going to skip the first stitch and make two single crochet stitches in the next stitch. One, two. And then the repeat pattern for row two is skip a stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch. And then one, two, and then skip a stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch. That's it. So go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way across for row two, and I'll meet you at the end of row two to show you how we end row two and approach the rest of the project. All right, reaching the end of row two, ending row two by making two single crochet stitches in that last stitch space right here. Awesome. And then for the extent of the project, guys, we are just repeating row two. So for row three through the end of row 66, just repeat row two. Chain one, turn our work, skip the first stitch space and make two single crochet stitches in the next stitch space. And then skip a stitch space, two single crochet stitches. That is it, awesome. Now before I let you go completely, we have three skeins of yarn here. So there is going to be a point twice in making this rectangular shape that you're gonna need to join more yarn to the project. So let me show you the invisible knot trick that I use all the time. It is my favorite go-to joining method. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut my yarn right there and pretend that I am running out of yarn. How I join more yarn to the project. So I take the yarn that's attached to my project, my working yarn, and I'll have it go that direction. I'll take my new skein of yarn that I wanna join I'll take that tail and I'll have it go in the opposite direction. I'll bud those two strings right next to each other. Take these two here, take two fingers, yarn over my two fingers, take that little tail, go over the two yarn strands between my fingers so that way the tail is poking out towards my fingernails. Then I'll grab that little tail Remove my fingers, pull tight for a knot, and then go to the other side. Two fingers, wrap around my two fingers, grab the little tail over the strings between my fingers, like that. 
grab that little tail, remove my fingers, pull tight for a knot. So there's two knots, one here and one here. Grab the yarn that's attached to my project and the yarn attached to my new skein of yarn. Pull and those two knots slide into each other and form a very strong bond. In fact, you can then take your scissors, cut those tails pretty close to that knot and you don't have to worry about this coming undone at all. I know that is going to be a concern of some. It has never failed me. Strong, strong join. And then as you continue working, your project, let me find it. So there's the join right there. I'm gonna go over it. You will be able to continue working and not have anything to come back and address. So I'm gonna go ahead, finish this here. There we go. And there we go. It completely camouflages in and you can't see anything. Nothing to come back and weave in, nothing to come back and address. You don't have to worry about ending your yarn on the end of a row and then starting a new skein at the beginning of a row. It's gonna waste a lot of yarn and we don't have that much yarn to waste in this particular project. So being able to join in the project, only having this much waste of the yarn is gonna be completely ideal. However, you used whatever joining method that you prefer, that you are most comfortable with. This is called the invisible knot join. And if you like it, that's awesome. Have a trick in your back pocket and I hope that you enjoy. So go ahead and continue on to the end of row 66. I will meet you there to show you how we will turn that rectangular shape into our pillow cover. And just finishing row 66, great. All right, so what you should be seeing right now is a really long rectangular shape. <laughs> and that is perfect. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our rectangular shape and we're gonna fold it in half. So fold it in half this way. And for me, I'm going to be joining two sides of the pillow. So these two sides, and I'm gonna leave this side of the pillow open. This side of the pillow is obviously already closed because of the fold. And we will be adding the zipper on this side. If you don't wanna add a zipper, feel free to just join on all three sides, ma making sure to add the pillow insert before you completely close. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tie off my work at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut about a three inch, eh, that's more like five, five inch long tail, yarn over, pull through for a tie off. Great, and I want that tail long for a reason. See how there's also a long tail on this side as well. Okay, so take your string. Now we're gonna be, have to be very careful with how much we have left here so we can make sure we have enough for everything we wanna do. So taking our string, starting on the side of our the corner of our pillow, going to the other corner. Try not to pull too much. You don't want it to be too tight. And then go back, grab your scissors and cut. And that should be enough yarn for you to join these two sides together. Grab your large yarn needle. Insert that through. I'm gonna start in the corner next to the fold. So if you wanna use stitch markers here just to make sure everything stays put, you absolutely can, that's definitely an option. For me, I'm just gonna line up these stitches and then I'm gonna join the yarn needle into the corner. Hold back about three inches here and tie two knots for security. And then we're just going to whip stitch these two together. So just in, around, in, around, in. All the way, all the way up this side. Right at the very end here, take the two tails, 
tie a knot in them. Perfect. And then repeat this join on the other side. Again, lining everything up, taking your tail one, one way, pulling it not too tight, but not too loose. So one and two. Attach to the corner with the fold, leaving the corner that's open on this side. Leaving behind about a three inch long tail, two, three inches. Tying your knot or two. There we go. And then joining on this side. And if you noticed that the other side, for some reason you came up short, I am making sure every time I go around, I am pulling tight. So there is no slack on the side join here. Okay, so we're not going loosey-goosey on the side join. I'm literally saving every bit of yarn I can all the way across. So hopefully that helps if you find you were running out of yarn. All right, just finishing up side number two. There we go. Tiny little tail. Tying this off. Awesome. Great. Now, while this pillow cover is inside out, because we will be flipping it inside right, so that way you can't see the join, while it's still inside out, let's go ahead and attach the zipper. So I'm gonna take my zipper and I'm going to center it on the opening. Now what you may notice is that the zipper is shorter than the entire opening. Did that on purpose. So grab your thread, grab your sewing needle, and I will go ahead and thread. So I take and I, dub, I double up mine, that's how I do mine, but you do yours however you do yours. Okay, so to attach the zipper, again, I try to center it, but it's okay if it's not perfectly center, it's just the bottom seal of your bag, not a big deal. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take just the top here, And of course, if you really, really want, you can grab some kind of clothespin or some kind of way of securing this down onto the work so that way you can make sure it doesn't move. You can absolutely do that. For me, I'm not gonna do that. Another thing I wanna point out before I get started is you want the zipper to be on the inside of the bag. That way you're not accidentally sewing, attaching this inside out. That would not be great. So make sure that the zipper is faced down. Face down, attach here. And then I put my hand between the two so I don't accidentally sew this shut. And I start, I find the brackets here and I'm gonna start just a little before the brackets. Enter into the yarn come through and I'm actually going to go through the tie there that way and that's going to seal me closed and then really I just attach by sewing this onto my pillow cover and it doesn't have to be pretty for a couple different reasons one this is all being made on the inside so we don't have to make sure that this is pretty by any means whatsoever two the color is so closely matched to camouflage. Because this is the same color, it's camouflaging in. You don't have, you can be sloppy, man. You do not have to be a perfectionist. I try to stay where the stitches are uh, like touching each other and in line with each other. So here are my stitches. They are in a straight line-ish, <laughs> straight-ish line. 
but just kind of sewing and attaching. I wanna also make sure I don't have any significant gaps. So I'm going forward then coming back and then go forward and then come back to attach to the last stitch here. I don't want any gaps. I don't want my zipper to have a space where I could literally like rip the zipper off, like stick my finger, finger or my hand underneath and separate it from the project. I definitely wanna make sure I have a, a good seal here on the project. And then all I am doing guys is joining this all the way across and then I'll meet you here at the end to show you where I stop. Great, and then when you make it all the way to the other end of your zipper, I move a little bit past where the zipper stops to seal it. Just a little bit past here. Great, and then I'll tie off this string. I hold some of the string back and I will twist it, and then I will take my yarn needle, go underneath the loop, through the loop for that tie off. And then I'll go ahead and weave this end in through the zipper part, just to make sure it stays as secure as it's gonna stay. There we go, and then and then cut. Great, okay, so there's one side all done and I wanted you to see my work here and the fact that this, this line is not straight by any means. <laughs> it's not necessarily pretty. If I were to use a sewing machine, this would be much better. But again, I wanted to show you this for perfectionists like me out there that are watching this. It doesn't have to be perfect. No one's gonna see this. It, the color is the same, so it camouflages, and that's perfectly okay. On this side, we will see that the edge lines up with the actual zipper. In some parts, it even overlaps a little bit, and that's okay, because when we bend it over, it's a clear pathway for the zipper to zip open and closed. All right, so to attach the other side of the zipper, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the zipper. Grab more thread. I'm gonna find this opening, the other side of the opening of the pillowcase, and I'm going to line up this part of the zipper with that opening. Start my connection or my join before the actual zipper, and then I will just keep working my way across. And this time, I'm going to just keep my finger, keep pinching this side of the zipper with the opening of the other side of the pillowcase, okay? Again, if you want to, you could take those bobby pins, you could just take uh, safety pins, you could take any kind of clamps and make sure that this stays on there if you want. And make your way all the way down to the other side. Okay, finishing attaching the second side of the zipper here. Again, gonna go just past where that little notch is for the zipper so it's secure there. And then I'm gonna tie off. And there we go. And weave this in so that I feel more comfortable with the string. There we go. Great. Now we are done attaching the zipper, but we do have an opening on both sides of the zipper that we need to close. And that is why having those really long tails was so important when we were joining the yarn, the sides together. Having those long tails is where this is gonna come in. So flipping this around, gonna grab the extra long one, the longer of the two. Great, and then I'm just going to join 
the open side right next to the zipper. And go over and through and over and through. And I'm actually gonna take this part of the zipper and I'm gonna hold it back so that way I can sew and attach and this, this part of the zipper stays on the inside of the pillowcase. Great. And then if you have enough to make your way backwards, that's great. If not, just tie off wherever you can tie off tail. I have enough where I could make it back there and I'm gonna take these two tails. And again, knots are your best friend to keep everything secure and then do the other side. Find the longer of the two tails. And this side is not as long. And I'm gonna go ahead and join those together. Again, I wanna move the tails, I wanna go underneath the tails, so kinda of move those out of the way so they stay on the inside of the pillow. And then back. And knots. Great, this part of the pillow is done, guys. So technically, we have a pillow case. Go ahead and take your pillow case and flip it inside right. Sweet, and now the join that we did on the sides is much cleaner. It looks much nicer. I'll pull that side out so it doesn't have that weird bubble. Great, and then if you want, you can take your fingers and pop out the corners here at the bottom. And now you have a working zipper. Pretty neat, right? So that is your zipper. And now the last thing we're gonna work on are making the really pretty flower appliques. Grab what's left of our yarn. Not a lot, we're literally using everything we got. The first applique, we're gonna start with a very short tail. We're gonna start by chaining 51 chains. I know, it sounds like a lot, but let's go for it. 51, one, two, three, 50, 51, great. And then we are going to cut tail here. There we go. Pull that yarn through the loop on your crochet hook. So now there's technically 50 chains. Great. And then repeat this two more times and we'll come back and we'll, we will attach it to the pillow. All right, now that we have our three chains of 50, let's go ahead and just grab one grab our pillow cover, and I like to place my circles in the upper corner, but feel free to place yours in the center of the pillow cover or wherever you wanna place your circles. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to thread my large yarn needle, and I'm actually gonna start at the chain closest to the tail. I'm going to attach there, I'm gonna place a hand on the inside of the pillowcase so that way I don't accidentally sew my pillowcase closed. And I'm going to insert my yarn needle into that first chain and then pop out and come through the second chain, second or third chain. Then I'm gonna take my chain and I'm gonna turn it. I want all my V stitches to stay facing upward, facing forward. But I'm just gonna kind of round it around where I just started. Again, hand on the inside so I don't accidentally sew my pillow shut. And make my way around. And then just keep going around and around and around until I've used up this whole chain. Okay, when you get to the very end of your chain here, I'm gonna come through. Make sure you place uh, your yarn needle through that last chain so that way we can secure the very end. Then come through 
into the work so we can make sure that that last chain is attached to the actual work and doesn't dangle out and about. Release my yarn needle, take the two tails, tie a knot to secure. Great, then I'm gonna take my crochet hook, come in right next to the tails and pull those tails on the inside of the pillow cover. Turn it inside out and then weave in my ends. So what I'll do is I'll take my yarn needle, go through, I'll go in between strands, I will go in and out weaving, but when you go in between the strands, that's when the fibers really cling to each other. And then I will come back, so I'll go one way and then I'll turn around and I'll come back. And that seems to work the best for me to keep my tail secure. There we go. And then do the same with the other tail. Then come back and attach your other two chains to your work. And then we will come back and add the stem, which is the last part of the whole pillow. The stem is the last thing that we have to make for our pillow and that just connects all of these circles that we just made to make them look like flowers. So grabbing your yarn, starting with the tail long enough for you to weave in your end, Attach your crochet hook. Great, so we're actually going to start with the middle circle and we're going to attach just at the base of it. So entering just underneath that chain so that way it looks like it's coming from that circle that they're attached, connected. And then working in a diagonal, pop out, yarn over, pull through, and we're going to slip stitch. Perfect, we're gonna work slip stitches on top of our work, which looks really neat. So there's one. We want a total of seven slip stitches worked in a diagonal. So entering your crochet hook in the same stitch that your yarn is popping out of. Working diagonal-ish, doesn't have to be perfect. There's two. Three. four, five, six, seven, great. Grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for you to weave in your ends. Yarn over that tail, pull it through the loop on your crochet hook for a tie off. Perfect, so there's stem number one. Now the next two stems are only going to be six slip stitches, that's it. So I'm going to actually have like a curve. I'm gonna curve up so it attaches to this stem and then comes down, curve down. Starting with a long enough tail for us to weave in that end. Touching crochet hook. Closest part to, of the circle to the stem. Going under. So we got one, two, three, connecting to the stem, four, and then working down. And this is what I like, because you can really manipulate where the stem goes. Five and six. Cutting long enough tail. Pulling the yarn tail through. The loop on my crochet hook for a tie off. Great. And then last one here. Base. Got one. Two. Three. Four connects it 
and then I'm going to just work down five and six just like that and then cutting my tail yarning over pulling through then I'm going to weave in all of my ends so they disappear and I have this beautiful floral looking pattern. So let me go ahead and weave these ends in so you can see it better what's happening and then we will just add the insert and be done. Now I wanted to pop in here while I was weaving in my ends just in case you wanted to see how I can make the stems pop forward a little bit so they don't lay so stiff and flat on the project. I can take my tails and I can work them underneath the stitches, the slip stitches that I made and it will cause those stitches to pop forward and go down, creating a bit of a 3D effect. So if you were curious at all about how to make your stems kind of pop forward at all, that's how I do it. And we're done guys, that's it. This is how we make our pillow cover. I hope you think it's beautiful, I hope you love it. The only other thing we have left to do is to add the pillow insert. Inside there, take the corners, go, there you go, zip it closed. <laughs> Such a satisfying feeling, especially when you know that you added the zipper yourself. And there you go, guys. There's your pillow. I hope you love it. All right guys, what did you think of the Blossom pillow cover? I'd love to know in the comment section below your experience with making the Blossom pillow cover, the chain appliques, crocheting on top of crochet, and even adding a zipper. Was it complicated, a little tough, or did it inspire you to put zippers on everything? <laughs> I'd love to know. If you liked this video, please push that thumbs up button. It's like a big high five and lets me know you liked the video. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my upcoming videos. I have some great ones you're not gonna wanna miss out on. If you want a little bit more out of my channel or just like to support my channel in general, join my membership program. I have a couple levels that I think you will love. If you liked this video, you might also like these videos right here, they're more home decor videos I've created that I think you will enjoy. Just keep it rolling. Or check out this video, which is a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for crocheting with me today, guys. I'll see you with the next one. Bye.